Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Lift Effect podcast. I am your host, Matt McNeil, founder, clinical director, and director of human performance at Lift Effect, where we assist professional pilots with maintaining better mental health and optimizing their mental skills. The goal of this podcast is simple to help pilots and other high liability professionals and disciplines come out of the shadows to discover how we can live better lives personally and professionally. Join us each episode as we discuss various topics ranging from mental health, mental skills and performance, to business, entrepreneurship, and a few other surprises along the way. I think all of this is really important. Yeah. We were talking about an issue where, you know, right now it's He's having some challenges yeah. that have to do with uh, uh, things that have gone on. And right now he's currently doesn't have his medical and is, stre- and is just being challenged on how to figure out what the way ahead is. Right. And we got into a conversation and I had, uh, I had remarked that when I listen to you talk, what I get from your conversations with me is that you're focused on past tensing, what was, and the th- where you were, and how you loved what you were doing, and then right now you're not. So now you're not only looking backwards, but you're looking forwards going, oh, I want to be back there again. I want to do all those things. And I'm going, but you're not in the past. That's already happened. And you're not in the future. It has yet to happen. Mm-hmm. And I said, what you need to do, do or what you need to consider, I'm not a clinician, so I don't want to tell him medical advice, but I said, consider looking at being in the present right now. And, and start f- focusing on what's going on around you. And I said, I asked, and then I go, I'll ask you a question. And it happened to me, or at least the first part of it did. In 1999, I had kidney stones. Mm. And it took me three months to get my medical back. And back then I was told, if you ever get any time in the rest of your career, uh, kidney stones again, you're pretty much grounded for a year. Mm-hmm. And if it happens a third time, it's a, it's a permanent lifetime grounding. So here you are. You, your body for, you know, and it could be because you drink too much coffee. Your body has produced stones and it's done it several times. But you're in perfect health. You know, you, you passed your stones, you're good to go. But now it's on your record and you've been now grounded for life. But you're not, you're in great mental health, you're great physical health. What are you going to do with the rest of your life? Mm-hmm. Start looking at all things that interest you. What is it? You know, is it cars? Is it, is it, uh, swimming? Is it boating? Is it, you know, woodworking, who knows what it is, and and start focusing on what would I do? Because I said, even if things are perfect for you, at some point, you're going to retire. What are you going to do with your life? Is it you are so consumed with this that the day afterwards, you're now going, I'm lost. I don't know what to do with myself. You know, so do those things because because when you're doing that, you can't think about the past or the future when you're focused on something with its research or whatnot. And that's all I was trying to go with is get, I said, you're like on this, it's not like the way I describe it is, is being too much on, uh, on um, adrenaline. If you're constantly, you never get to deep peak, you get exhausted, you get mentally drained and, and you just, you're just going, oh, you have this, start getting this hopeless kind of feeling inside of yourself. I said, you got to sit there and pull back, kind of get yourself regrouped and, Get yourself to a calmer, more peaceful place where you can start thinking more rationally and going, you know, hey, is in this case, being a pilot shouldn't define your life. It's what you do and it's something you enjoy. But I always said for me, and I said, I I always try to bring it back to me because I don't want to tell somebody else to live their life. I would hate, it'd be a very sad commentary on my life. If somebody said, when they think of me, they go, oh, Carl was a pilot. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, I don't know but he was a pilot. I would want, I feel like I'm so much more than that. I want to be so much more than that. And so that also means that I've got to believe I'm more than that. Mm -hmm. If I believe all I am is a pilot and I've wrapped my whole life around that, then in essence, I've kind of created this self-fulfilling prophecy that when somebody thinks of me as a pilot, they're right. And so that was what I was kind of getting, trying to get across was start looking at and expanding and, and, and kind of fleshing out your who you are. I heard something yesterday, and it was uh, it was a video, and it was Sylvester Stallone. He was talking about how he's how he built how he wrote the book uh, the the screenplay of Rocky, mm-hmm. and he said, 
I looked at myself and I looked at what I had done with my life up to this point. And he was like, I guess in his early 20s or mid 20s. And he goes, he says, I'm the director of my own film, my life. And he said, how would I feel about my life if I was sitting in the audience watching it? Do I like where it is, what it is, what it's doing, the direction? He said, I get to write that script. No one else. And I thought about it. I'm going, you know, if I was sitting in the audience watching me, what would I, would I think that this is a good story? Would I like what I see? Can I just sort of Yeah. No, go ahead. I mean, I wasn't trying to ramble. I just No, didn't. no, no. Pro- here's the problem with a lot of what what people are I think that this issue that's so common that we all do is one is your life doesn't exist in the past, it doesn't exist tomorrow, it exists in this moment. And if if you lose sight of the, the moment that you're in, you're living in an illusion of of thoughts. And I'm not saying don't plan, all right? It's not about like not planning for the future or you know the the past doesn't affect you, but if you are so in the past or so in the future, you're you're actually going to miss the actuality of where your life is, which is in the moment. So that's problematic. The other thing is you know, I don't know the you know regarding this this particular conversation that you were having with this person, but there's a lack of perspective that's happening in in that person's frame, but which is why they're in such a poor emotional state. There's no perspective. So what is perspective? Perspective is being able to to step back, kind of like what you were saying is if you were watching a movie, what what Stallone is talking about is, Stepping back and watching yourself, that is a, a, a concept of perspective taking, which is one of the flexibility skills that sits in the act hexaflex, which anyway, I'm not going to go down the, the rabbit hole on that, but like the, these I am statements, I am. So what do, we, what do people say? Well, I am a pilot. I am a captain. I am uh, medically fit. I am medically unfit. I am a check, uh, a check, air, uh, check pilot. I am a leader i am a a good husband i'm a terrible husband i am a good father i'm a terrible father i'm a great friend i'm a poor friend so the question i have is well is whatever you say that you are is that true is is that true all of the time well of course it's not true all the time some days I'm like number one dad. Some days I'm like, oh man, I'm coming up <laughs> short. You know. Some days I'm a I'm a, a you know great pilot. Other days, eh, you know, kind of mediocre. Some days I'm a, a I'm a, am I a pilot? I'm a I'm a. The, these are verbal constructs that lead, and, and they're seemingly harmless labels that we give ourselves and other people. And the problem is that they they easily draw us into very, very, very unworkable traps. And these are the unworkable traps of I am. I am. Very dark places. Well, what happens if I, if I have verbally constructed a story that says, okay, you know, successful people, driven people, wealthy pilots, they fly a lot. But a mm-hmm. good husband, a good dad a good son, a good friend. Well, they they don't fly a lot because they want to spend time doing those things. Now, when you take this story that you tell yourself literally, now you have a problem because you can't be both, can you? Mm -mm. The real problem arises when these identities, uh, when they're all important to us, but actual life choices are determined by an attachment to this concept of who you believe you are and the content of your your stories your thoughts and your feelings and these rules that you have about who you think you are the sense of self-identity it's it, it gets defined by the content that's th- thinking and feeling and images and memories and pictures and and uh you know se- uh, self as content and then this conceptualized self becomes the driving force behind all your behavior decisions. And this is where pilots get into trouble. Same with cops. Same with doctors. Marines. My best friend is a Marine. 
firefighters Firefi- firefighters <laughs> first responders first I'll say responders yeah. yeah so what's the alternative well guess what there's this part of you that you can cultivate that will help you start to get some perspective so the first part that we covered what we just talked about what you were talking about is that's the thinking self and I bet you the person that you were talking to is just thinking, 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 thinking. And they probably say, I can't shut my mind down, right? Can't, can't turn it off, right? Yeah. That's because that's the thinking self. That's what the brain does for all of us. And when you, when you double down on it, you triple down on it, you, put, you bet the farm on the thinking self, you're hosed. Because it will just think and think and think and think, and it'll drive you into the ground. So what's the alternative? There's this part that can observe. That's the part that says, okay, instead of just thinking, I'm going to step back and watch. And this part of you is very stable. The thinking part is unstable because it goes all over the place. It goes wild. It runs roughshod over your life. But the observing part, that's the part that's actually stable. It's an unchanging perspective from which one thinks and feels and remembers and experiences. It's the sense of self that actually elevates above all of the content of your internal experiences and all of these I am statements. I am this, I am that, I am this. And from the observing self, the part that just steps back and watches, like watching the movie, what Stallone is talking about or what you're talking about. See, from this perspective, you're just watching. You're not defined by your thoughts or your sensations or your emotions or your memories or your impulses, past tensing, future tensing. Rather, you're just the person that contains them. And what this does is this allows you to experience your life in the moment. As it is unfolding and you can create some, some wiggle room or some flexibility so that you can actually then choose your actions, your behaviors, not your thoughts, choose your behaviors, what you do with your arms and your legs and what comes out of your mouth based on what you, what you deeply care about. This is where we get into the values stuff, not just goals, values rather than just things that are based on stories about who you tell tell yourself about who you think you are. If you think that you're a pilot or you're a husband or you're a fi- you're more. That is a part of who you are. Might be a very salient part, but the day you think that's the tum so the sum total, the tum total, the sum total of who you are, you are now stuck in an unworkable trap, and that is like firing up the turbine engine that's just going to go and go and go and go and it's going to think and think and think and think and it's going to drive you nuts i would say at that point basically you've stopped giving yourself choices and options you've said that's it you backed yourself into a corner i I, those are the only options i have left uh one of the other comments i had made was i said that the body needs to repair itself and, and it goes in different ways. It's like if you if you had knee and uh, knee operation and you've been running marathons, do you expect to run it the next week or the next month? You know, you can't you can't expect the body just to recover immediately because that's what you did. You go, well, I did it before. I can why can't I do it right now? I said the comment that I had made is the body does what it does when it does it. Mm. And sometimes we just got to give ourselves some grace to go. As fast as we want things to occur, it just doesn't always happen that way. And when you were talking about planning, that's kind of what I was talking about. But the the problem was so often, and I did it too, the planning was about that future tensing about what I had done. Right. That wasn't, that was the wrong thing to be planning on because that was the very thing that the my condition was stopping me from doing. Yep. But it wasn't going to stop me from doing other things. So sometimes you got to take a detour to get to your end end destination. Mm -hmm. And maybe this was at this way, this was what I needed to do to look at things. And I, and I I also said, if you told me two years ago that I would be doing a podcast, I'd have said, you're nuts. 
you're flat out crazy that I'm going to be sitting there uh, being a part of something about mental skills and mental health. I would have said, you're nuts. But sometimes things, they, they, they happen and they work out the way they do. And I'm, I'm really proud of being a part of this, that it's something I would never have thought of doing otherwise. And so I'm trying to take what is not a great situation that I, you know, because this is not the way I thought my life would go, mm. and trying to make it something more. And now I've seen a side of myself I've never seen before. Yeah. And if other people can do the same thing, I feel like it's just you got to get out of that mental rut where you've 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 closed down any other option because that's all you're looking at. Yeah, I mean, it's I. This is just so pervasive in high performance professions because you you know we have to double down so hard on um these identities of who we who we are and what we are that you you can easily just become over identified and well, the, you've worked hard to get there yeah you know you've put a lot of time and effort i get it but that that's not just who you like you said that's not i am yeah i am more than that well what happens when you can't be that that's my point you know look at all the people they retire and like i said they that's all they've ever done it's all they've ever thought about. And now they're going, what do I do? Who am I? You know, all I've ever done is live to fly. I love to fly. I want to fly again. And I'm going, well, you know what? I loved flying the F4. Health, retirement of the aircraft, physical issues, age, something was going to stop me. Yeah. So, yep, you know, we, we have to, this is just, you know, I, I, it's just another phase of our life. Here's something. I mean, people a have asked me many times, well, what, do you, what the hell do you do? Uh, well, one is you learn on flexibility skills. That's why you need to come in and do the mental mm -hmm. skills training. Um, but also one of the things that I do, and I've just done, maybe I, I'm one of those people that's more afraid of not doing something than doing something. Like some people are scared to jump into the pool. Um, you know, they're like, I don't know. They're kind of risk averse. I don't like, I don't like change. I'm somebody that is afraid to not change almost probably to a pathological level. I mean, there's some issues with that too, but like, I think part of, uh, part of the reason I like to throw monkey wrenches into my self-concept is to knock me out of these over identified uh labels that are insidious and, and and sneaky how they start to kind of they come in from 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 underneath where you start to feel like you start to just identify with this is who i am and i like to sort of change okay i'm gonna grow my hair down to my you know my shoulders you know i'm gonna buzz it off now i'm gonna try you know it's like part of it is a, i try to challenge myself to not take myself so fucking seriously all the time about you know, and if I was paid a dime for every time somebody said to me, wow, you're kind of intense, I'd be a very rich man. That was since I was a kid. It was like, you know, there's, there's nothing light about what I do, but I try to throw things, throw monkey wrenches in there to surprise myself so that it's like, it, it gets me out of this comfort zone of I am this, I am that. And I've been very intentional. I mean, this is why I keep talking about the importance of creativity and art and you know i love music and i love i love uh you know photography and painting and sculpture and you know messy I, anything is that that just gets you out of this like i have to have everything so is a really good thing because if you don't you're going to start taking yourself really damn seriously and that's unless you can maintain those things forever you're you're gonna have a, a moment of awakening when you realize you can't be that in that moment, and if you don't have the flexibility to handle that, you're gonna make yourself sick. You're gonna drive yourself crazy. I tell I tell people all the time that we work with is you know you existed long before airplanes, and if you're lucky, you'll exist long after them. But it's easy to forget. And most of us all, you know, it's the earliest memory I have is standing at the airport wanting to fly the plane. I was right there. I get it. We were invulnerable, indestructible, and we were going to live forever. Going to live forever. Mm -hmm. And, all, 
Yeah, and it's like, you know, you've got, well, you don't have to do anything. I'm just telling you what happens if you don't. So anyways, what are we going to talk about today? <laughs> well, I got something. I'm going to throw something at you. And um, I watched this. It was like a three or four minute video. And it was Bob Newhart. Oh, I love Bob and, Newhart. And it was a skit that he did. And he was a, Brilliant. Ther- a therapist psychiatrist. And yes. this lady came in. And I don't, you may have even seen it. Where I'm sure I've seen it. Yeah. He sits down with her and he goes, he said, you know, uh, my consultations are pretty pricey, but I, I and back then, uh, uh, you know, he goes, it's, I've charged you a dollar a minute for the first five minutes, then nothing after that. He says, but I don't make change. And he made a couple other comments. And she, so he goes, and start now. And so she goes, well, I have a fear of just being hit, you know, in a box, you know, and he goes, really? <laughs> I remember this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and yes. so he's talking. And he goes, and he finally goes, well, you know, I think, you, I think you just, it's your claustrophobic. And she goes, yeah, I think I am. And he goes, well, I have, I have just the answer for you. And it's just two words. And so she's starting to get her notepad out. And he goes, no, I don't think you need that. I, I think you can remember these two. And he goes, Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. And she looks at him and, and he goes, uh, well, I guess we're done. That was uh, three minutes. She goes, well, I only have a $5 bill. He says, I don't make change. He says, he, she goes, well, then I want the rest of my five minutes. So she sits down and starts talking about something else. And he goes, as she starts opening his, his, uh, her mouth about something, he goes, Stop it. And it just keeps going. And then finally at the very end, she goes, well, I really don't like what you're doing. And he goes, well, I got 10 words from you, for you. And she looks and she pulls, oh, good. She pulls out her notepad and goes, stop it or I'll put you inside of a box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, the world is part of Bob Newhart. Yeah. yeah. And, and the whole reason so I bring this up was I remember when, when I started going through my stuff, my issues, and, and it's come up in so many other conversations. People, well-meaning people, Listen, and they want to offer, you know, their, 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 their heartfelt, you know, Hey, I'm there for you. Uh, you know, anything I can do. And, or some of them, well meaning start giving advice, like advice. And what do you do when you get advice from 10 different people and, 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 and up to and including therapists, psychiatrists, everybody's got their answer of what you need to do. And often it conflicts. How do you, how do you work through the, the the multitude of all of that input where you're going, I don't know which way to go because I'm running five. To, if I listen to everybody, I would end up being paralyzed because I would run everywhere. I just uh, not yeah. go anywhere. Yeah. What do you do with something like that? It's a great question. And it's so there, we are in a world of constant advice giving and constant talking heads. And, and I mean, you could claim we're doing advice giving on this, this podcast. I, here's my f- belief. And anybody that's worked with me, uh, well, if you go and if you've been a V1, you, well, I say this all the time and I say it over and over and over. Nobody is an expert on you except you. You are the expert on you. Nobody is the expert on you. And if they say they're the expert on you, they're full of crap. You know yourself better than anybody does. And I truly believe that. I truly believe that. At some point, you know, you're, you're going to have to do what you feel is correct. Now, what, okay. So advice giving, well, I always say like, if I'm going to go get advice, I make sure that the source of advice is the highest quality source. <laughs> you're laughing because, well, because I mean, you know, <laughs> well, well, no, that's not true. I mean, but you know what I mean? I mean, but I mean, yes. like, like, yeah, a uh, lot of stop. people are just casual acquaintances yeah. and really aren't invested in you and and don't know much about you. Yeah. They're well-meaning. There's a little saying that I, I I try to live by. Stop asking rich people for money and broke people for advice. So what does that mean? What that means is there is no shortcut. There's no shortcut. There is no get rich quick scheme. It's bullshit. It takes work, whether it's actually building wealth or it takes becoming psychologically, emotionally, spiritually rich. You have to put the work in. 
and you know going to people that have done it just tell me how to do it tell me how to get there like that is that you can that's fine but you've got to go from theory to practice and that's a whole different ball game so there's no shortcut you've got to put the work in you got to have the good advice you know but you've got to put the work in you just made a comment about give me give me the plan give me the way ahead and i had made the comment that the mind is is the most intricate thing out there the, there there's nobody that knows what the way is no. it's it's different for every person that's right there is there is no I, I you know it'd be wonderful if there was this is the solution this is the golden ticket you do this and it's 100% you're done it, it and it may be for one person but for no one else i agree so you, you know you want you, you, now b asking broke people for advice this happens all the time i see this all the time like i would not go to somebody that was horrifically out of shape and unhealthy and ask them for advice on how to get in shape and be metabolically healthy. And now that's going to put there. I'm, I'm going to get a lot of angry emails about this. Well, I'm going to get a lot you... of pissed off people for saying that, but it's, but the, at the end of the day, like, would you go to a physician if they were morbidly obese and smoking a cigarette and he's going, or she's going, you know, you really need to start exercising more and you got to start eating better. And like, like, do you see the, the, the hypocrisy of that? Like that don't ask broke people for advice. If you're looking for somebody on the, you know, relationship advice and they're like, you know, in a proverbial dumpster fire of relationships, is that really the person that you should be seeking counsel and advice for on relationships? I think not. Now I would that, like to, you know, might be, yeah. you can disagree with me, but I'd like to amend what you're saying slightly, if that's all right. And that would be that, um, there's value in talking to those kind of people. If you're looking at it with your eyes wide open, i.e. if nothing else, what not to do, where, where were the pitfalls? What didn't work? Because sometimes if you can help not walk down a path, the wrong path going, this didn't work for me. And it may or may not work for you, but this right. is, was my results. So you can use it as a as a kind of a uh, experiential thing where this is what happened when other people did it and didn't succeed in this particular scenario. So, but if you're looking for them to go, this is what you need to do. I think it's 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 you flipped it. Uh, you flipped the the conversation on its head. That was my thought. Yeah, I guess that's valid. It's totally valid. But you got to be careful with what you do. So, okay, we're talking about advice giving. I, you yep. know, I mean, I'm not a super huge fan of advice giving. And and if you really want to work with somebody that is not going to give you advice, you go and get a coach that is ICF accredited, International Coaching Federation accredited. Part of that paradigm or that protocol, which is the most respected coaching organization in the world, they actually have a code of ethics and. I mean, coaching is not regulated. That's part of the problem with coaching. Whereas mental health is regul it's regulated by a state board and there's all this stuff. Coaching is just like anybody can call himself a coach. But you really need to go to a coach. If you want somebody that's at the highest caliber, you go to an ICF accredited coach. Now, there are business coaches. That's different. I wouldn't, you know, what does coaching mean? There's lots of arguments about that. But ICF coaches do never give advice, ever, 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 ever. They maintain the belief that that you you are the expert on you, and you need to be able to just kind of sift through with somebody a, a thinking a strategic thinking partner to figure out what is the best course of action for you. But it's got to come from you. If it if it's somebody else gives it to you, that's actually disempowering to you. And I think that there's in depending on the situation, there is that is a a, a very valid point. So. You, it's important to know what, what you're looking for and what you actually need. Now, let me ask you a question. This is kind of just came up in my mind. Let's say you have two situations. Here's how most people will think about this. Let's say um, you decide to uh, leave your airline and go to a different airline. And all of a sudden, there is a... Uh, something happens and that airline halts everything 
and they furlough. Now, the second situation is you go to that airline, you leave your airline, you go to the other airline, you get get through training. There's huge opportunity. They they're they're growing fast. You get to upgrade much faster. You get to move up in seniority much quicker. You're making a lot more money. Okay, those those two situations. A, you get furloughed. B, you get it's flourishing. Now, if I was to ask you, which one was the better decision? What would you say? Option A, if I said, was that a good decision, what would your answer be? Option A being the furlough? Yes. You'd go, well, that was a poor one. That was a poor decision, right? And option B, you would say, that was a great decision. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) That is fundamentally flawed, that process right there. Because what you're doing is you're, it's, it's, it's outcome, it's result bias. And this is what we do as human beings. And we could do a whole show on this. Maybe we'll do that. We'll, we'll get this one in the queue. But that is a piss poor way of evaluating and reflecting on your life. You're, you're making a reflection based on the outcome. And that has nothing to do with the actual process of your decision making. And that's what people, they, 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 they view everything based on the result. And the result, is two parts. It's one, the process of your decision making. How sound was that process? And second, you know what the second part is? Luck. It's luck. There is a randomness to our existence that, and as if you think about pilots and first responders and cops and 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 physicians stuff, we are control freaks. We are control freaks and we want control no matter what. And we live under this illusion that we have control. We don't. There is an element of luck to everything. You know, 9 11. So a lot of us were in class during 9 11 or on IOE, and guess what happened? People ran. They never predicted, couldn't have imagined something that would happen, and it shut things down for a decade, a decade and a half, nothing, no movement. I mean, it was it was like, bang, everybody's on the street. And you go, oh, I should have just stayed. If I'd stayed at my carrier, I wouldn't have. I was so senior. I w- Are you telling me that that was a poor decision that you left? Well, maybe it was, but it wasn't because of the outcome. But we are so outcome-oriented, yep. and we live under this illusion that we have control and we don't, we don't. So what my, my advice, here's some advice about not getting advice, but, but my advice is work on your decision-making process that you can cultivate how to make a good decision, which nobody wants to spend time on unless they come in and do coaching. And we work on this. I, I work on this ad nauseum with my clients, but they don't want to work on that. They just want to say, okay. And then what we do is let's say it's a good decision or you, what you define as quote, a good decision. Cause the outcome was good. And then you live under this illusion that you are making, this is how you make a good decision. Or if it was a bad outcome and you go, oh, this is a terrible decision. Well, maybe it wasn't a terrible decision. Maybe it was a, but I'm going to throw that out because the outcome was bad. And then what happens is we don't learn. And then there's this repeated problem. And you know, we say all the time, there's no winning and losing. There's just winning and learning. If you're willing to learn, if you're willing to learn. So that would be my advice to you is learn how to actually make a good decision that isn't just result oriented because there is a randomness and there is a a, a large degree of luck to life that is just a factor. And if you don't recognize that, you're going to be vying for control that you're never going to have. And you're going to be looking to control things that you shouldn't and not looking and not weighing in on things that you can control i'd like to <clears throat> tell you how i've implemented what you just said um but first of all add on to your decade the age 65 rule yeah <laughs> you know who knew that was coming right but uh, you know when you're talking about that because I, I i used to do some of those very same things and then i started saying how did i know that was going to happen and then when i started looking at it and how i've come to grips with it or tried to is that I look back and I go, we, when we make a decision on what path we have, let's just say there's four or five paths, and four or five options and choices. Usually one of them is a really bad diso- decision. 
or you go, that's not a good one at all. And then the others have varying degrees of good, better, best, outstanding, or at least at that moment, you do your due diligence, you learn it, or, or you learn about it and you go, okay, that's the, that makes the most sense for me where I'm at right now. I said, only in retrospect would you be able to know whether the, what you thought was the best choice was the best choice. And you can't kick yourself for that. No. I said, what you can kick yourself for though is intentionally choosing the bad choice. When you know that yeah, the that's the worst not, possible yeah, choice. When you know that that's not got a good outcome or the outcome odds were so low and you still were stubborn going, I, that's the one I want to do anyway. Then you can kick yourself because of the other four, what looks outstanding may have only been the average one. And the one that was okay, so so would have been the great one. You got to be, you got to be at peace with the fact is I didn't make a bad decision. I made the best decision I could based on the information I had at the time. And that's that decision-making process, but you need to be at peace with it and go, as long as I didn't knowingly choose an, an obviously bad one, because that's what people are doing. They go, well, why didn't I take that one? Well, did you know? Because I guarantee if you did, you would have taken it, yeah. but you didn't. So and I would you say, don't, and let, me, let me just amend one piece. Don't kick yourself. Just learn. Yeah. Le don't like, kick yourself. Just, just, just use it as an opportunity to examine deeply what that how you arrived at there and where were some of the stop gaps and where were some of the pivot points so that you can actually learn from it and then it's a win then it was like yes. oh my god i would never have learned this if i hadn't have done that you know but don't kid yourself into thinking that there isn't an element of luck there is an element of luck i mean we used to say in in safety you know aviation safety is that you know you look at a crew that had a you know a serious violation or an incident or god forbid an accident we, you know, we jokingly say, well, the biggest mistake they made was going to work that day because <laughs> there is an element of, you know, this happened and then this happened and, the, you know, the accident was, it goes way back in the chain and hopefully, you know, there's enough layers of cheese in there to capture it. But sometimes it just, the stars aligned a certain way and it just went sideways and, you know, that, that part of that is just randomness. Oh God! Like, what are the po you know? What are the chances? I'll ask you a question. When you were in the cockpit flying, mm. and somebody would say, "God, I wish I hadn't done X." Mm -hmm. Do you know? How, uh, I'm curious. How often to you was it about an investment opportunity? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you know the answer to that. Yes, <laughs> I, you know, I can't tell you how often I hear, "I wish I hadn't." Yeah invested in or started this or done that yeah. oh my god you know that's again you didn't go into it with the intent now do, was your decision making process flawed or were you open-eyed and honest with it or was it just you, you got lured by the sexiness of this huge return or all of that that's part that that's something you can go back and like you said learn learn what why did you get seduced by that you know, what seduced you? And then once you figure that out, go, okay, going forward, be aware of it. Be be careful that when it starts to happen, you go step back and go, am I being clear-eyed or am I getting seduced again? So that's what I would say. That's like you say, that's how you learn. Because you're presented with opportunities every day. And that was a comment I made recently. And I said, there are opportunities happen every day and we do one of three things with them. We don't, we miss them. We just flat out miss them. We see them when we take ad, uh, upper, uh, advantage of them. And the third one, which is by far the biggest, is we see them and we give whatever reason it is that we choose not to do it. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. Uh, it's not something I'm that interested in now. But they're there every day. That's that decision-making process that you need to, as long as it's fundamentally sound, don't beat yourself up when... It, you know, the outcome isn't what you envisioned it to be. You made the best decision based on the information you had at that time. Now, if you had access to other information, you chose not to do it. Well, now, you know, you better access it next time. So those are my comments. Again, I'm pontificating, but it's something I really, because I had to make peace with that because I was doing a lot of that. I wish I hadn't done this. Yeah. I mean, I, financially, I'm not where I want to be because of poor decision-making process. In some cases, I think I knew that they were wrong, but I wanted to believe so badly. I talked myself into something I shouldn't have done. And now this is, because this is all about life. It, there's so many 
it, this goes with finances, relationships, professional, everything. It, you just, yeah. you gotta I, have I don't, a good thing. you know, I just don't live my life in regret. I used to, you know, back in the day before I worked on myself, I think I, I, that was just a factor that was always sort of there, but I just don't, I don't live my life in states of regret. I, I, I choose to try to examine, um, w how could I learn from this and then make a decision to, to take a different path as a result of that. It's secondly, I mean, with investing, uh, you know, that, that's why I have Justin, <laughs> um, you know, I don't, I know where my limitations are. I don't, I don't, I'm not, you know, I, I try to lean on people that I trust to do that. It doesn't mean I don't, you know, have some interest in it and I try to learn what I can, but I'm not, you know, I don't have to be everything all the time. And so you, having a team, I think is really, really important. Um, if you want to keep your sanity and if you want to leverage, you know, uh, other people's expertise that you trust. I think that's I think that's very 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 important to uh to do. But I just don't I don't live my life in regret because what is the good of that? What good does that do? It just puts you in a crappy emotional state and it puts you in freeze fight or run. And then guess what's going to happen to your decision making? It's just going to be reactive and twitchy and it's not going to be sound. So it starts with making a decision that you're just done with that shit of living in regret and you're going to try to figure out how to learn from your from your you know what what went well and what didn't go well it's just how we debrief technically we're supposed to debrief a flight what was good what was not good where's the room for improvement what needs work what needs work how often have you heard oh it was a great flight y'all did great no all the time yeah i just want to get and, out and, of there and, and, and if you're and, honest yeah. with yourself you go i know that i didn't do these things and you're telling me that you didn't see them or you just didn't think that, you, ah, you know, that's how we get better. But don't tell me, ah, oh, you did everything great. I know what I, if you're honest with yourself, you usually know which, you pretty well know where your discrepancies on a particular event were. These are the kind of conversations that we have that we just kind of were riffing on. And today, instead of talking about such heavy stuff, we decided to just kind of Talk this about is a things. little heavy yeah yeah it's a little heavy but it's also yeah. about something that really will help your life mm -hmm. it really will if uh, you wanted it, to i mean it's yeah. again well, it's all about you know, choice yeah it always is about and choice. nobody's nobody i'm not the expert on you carl's not the expert on you you're yeah. the expert on you you know you're the expert on you but but i have the vantage point of standing on a different i stand on a different mountain than the mountain you're standing on and you know, when you're standing on top of a mountain, it's hard to sometimes see the paths that are down there because you're standing on top of it. And so it, it, it helps to have perspective of somebody that's, that's has a little bit more perspective on what you're standing on and will be able to point out maybe some different paths that you're not seeing. Nobody well, can smell their own breath. You yeah, know? Using that analogy, you're at the top of the mountain and all the other people that get up there tell you about the paths that they took. And sometimes there's some common threads and themes or paths that people took. And, and to take that analogy and put it back into you or the person is listen to what people say. And, and if there's something in there that has some value, consider it. If it doesn't mean you have to take everything, sometimes you'll take nothing. So, and you might get five, six, 10 people over a period of time and you will build something that works for you. It has to work for you. It doesn't. You know, just because it works for me doesn't mean it'll work for you. And no one should say, well, it worked for me. It will work for you because now they're dictating you, your life. No one dictates your life, but you. Well, hell, I was going to do a ask me anything episode, but I guess we're not going to do it. I got some funny questions. Well, good questions. A couple of funny ones. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do the throwaways. Somebody asked, who are you going to vote for in this election? Come on. That's funny. You think I'm going to answer that? <laughs> that's crazy. That's why does it to, matter? Why does it quick, matter? That's a quick way to end our podcast. <laughs> why, why, well, why does it matter? It's yeah, not, nobody's it's a business. personal preference. A personal nobody's choice. business. You got to no. vote for the vote for the person you want. That's the beauty yeah. of of uh, living in our country is you get to vote for who you want. I have Isn't never cool? asked. Yes, I've never asked my wife who she's voted for, and she's never asked me, and I don't tell her. That's a personal. It's nobody's thing. business. Yeah, you want yeah. to tell somebody great. But right. don't feel like the people are obligated to tell yeah. you. Like that's a, I appreciate the question, but 
no, <laughs> not happening. Uh, let me look here. I should, she've got this list of questions that are kind of funny. Um, now this will be a good one for the show for, for an ask me anything. So this one, let me see one that I, I'll find ones that I, I just am not comfortable as answering. Uh, why am I not comfortable answering the, 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 who will I vote for? Because one is, I think it's, it's in the age of where we're at, of the divisiveness of politics. It, that will just like, I, I don't, it doesn't matter to me. I don't val determine your value as a human being based on who you're going to vote for. But, you know, a lot of people do. And I think that that's just not something I want to promote on this show. This isn't a political show. Things are so polarized right now. It's very difficult to have a, uh, a, a conversation where you agree to disagree. Yeah. People it can't really do is. it. They can't, they, or so many won't do it. It's not that they can't. They won't. They, yeah, they refuse to do it. I think it's like one out of seven people has some a, 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 a direct family member that they don't speak to anymore because of politics. Like and, just and nothing should do that. Nothing. Really sad. It's really sad. I think people are so angry. Yeah. I, I've said to you before, the only person that's going to agree with everything you think and say is you, and half the time you won't even agree with that. Uh, half the time, I, exactly. I don't even agree with that. But yeah, I think anything politics related, I will not talk about. There's some stuff on religion. I think that I'm, I, I love spirituality. I think spirituality is transcendence. I think that's a huge factor in our, our mental health and our really how we operate as human beings. I think it can mean religion. I don't think that it has to, but all religions are welcome here. Um, that's my feeling. I don't care what you are, how you identify. Or what you're not. Or what you're not. So I don't, I don't disclose my own beliefs on that. Um, I mean, I suppose I could. That's, that's something to think about, but I, I don't think it really matters. I, my question is, what about you? I find questions about me to be strange. I know you, you know, you and I have different thoughts about that, but this show is not about me. It's not about Carl. It's about you, the listener. This is about for you to reflect on your life. So I will share with you things about me if it will, if it will help you reflect on you. But I never like it when artists or whatever, they, they say, well, what's the song about? And then they answer, that's just the stoop. It's about what you, the listener, create in your mind when you hear it. That's what, what the song is about. And if I do uh, recollect, you are, oh, what are you? Oh, well, that's right. You're a musician. I forgot. Oh, yeah. You <laughs> oh, yeah you, you've, done, you've done some recording. So mm -hmm. you're speaking from a point of uh, sure. knowledge. <laughs> well, or a painting. If somebody right, yeah. makes a painting yeah. and they say, well, what is the painting about? I mean, that I why would you answer that the painting should be about what you the viewer get out of it yeah what's it about for you it's one of the reasons why i've always liked instrumentals a little bit more than uh vocals because you it's left to the interpretation of each individual right. you you put the you put your words to it versus words that are already there that make it a lot harder to to get you know envision it slightly different right. not that i don't love vocals you know, right. songs that have words i just I've always gravitated towards instrumentals i agree so for that I, I, yeah reason. i mean i i like it all i like all of it yep. i think even i think lyrics can be powerful but if you if you can kind of like figure out how to um you know how do you assign this to your own life it's like the soundtrack to your own life that's what's beautiful about art is it makes you become introspective and reflect on your own experience so I'll, I'll ask you to sum it all up today. Yeah. It's not something that we expected to do, but it's, I think there's yeah. value. Uh, what would be the takeaway for today? Takeaway for today is look at, don't get suckered into, be careful of those I am statements. Because if you're saying I am this, my argument is you're, you're a liar. <laughs> because you can't possibly be that all the time. Okay, I am a dad. Yes, I'm a dad now. That that is something. But am I a good dad? Am I a perfect dad? Am I am I the best parent? Am I the, like the, you? The qualifiers. Y yeah, exactly. <laughs> Be careful of those getting getting hooked on those perfectionistic that perfectionistic trap of thinking. So be, you because you're putting yourself in a bind that's impossible. So instead of doing that, maybe become a little bit more observational, so that you can figure out what's the best path for you in that moment. 
get in the moment. That's my first takeaway. And my second one is don't get suckered into outcome bias. I make good decisions based on the outcome. That's a, that's a terrible way to evaluate your decision-making process. It's a, it is the worst possible thing you could do to evaluate your decision-making process. Understand that luck is part of it and that you're never going to get rid of some of that. And if you can evaluate and, and look at the way that you make decisions and break that down, that's going to be a much better place for making, actually making decisions than just based on, on the outcome. Did it work or did it not? It's, there's value in spending time to take the time to evaluate your decision-making process based on what's happened so far. And not because of anything other than going, are the decisions, the, the process that I'm using is there? Is it fundamentally sound or is it flawed to the point where I'm just reactionary or just, um, like you say, I'm always looking at the outcome versus the process to get there to make the best decision. Um, yeah, it's uh, we, too many people do that. We hope you liked today. It was a little different. Uh, it kind of <laughs> took a life of its own. Please take the time that uh, there's two links on our podcast. One is for a newsletter and the other is for our premium content. If, if you want to leave a comment or question, go to lifteffect.supercast.com. And at the top, there's a, a link that says, ask me anything. And then you can put those comments about why we don't talk about who we vote for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who knows what we're going to get now. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure I'll get some ma- mad people, but that's okay. Thank you for everything that you do when you listen and the comments you do give. We respect and appreciate all of them. Thank you so very much. And we thank you for the time you take to listen to us because we know how valuable your time is. And we look forward to seeing you on our next podcast. Until then, have a great day and a great week. See ya. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Lift Effect Podcast. If you want to dive deeper into this episode and every episode, go to the Lift Effect podcast.podbean that's p-o-d-b-e-a-n dot com if you're enjoying the show we would love it if you'd follow us on spotify and rate review and subscribe on apple podcasts we really appreciate your support you can find me on facebook instagram and linkedin all with the id matthew mcneil This show is brought to you by Lift Effect, a clinical mental health and consulting company that assists air carriers, corporate flight departments, pilot unions, and commercial pilots by providing comprehensive psychotherapy and mental coaching services to pilots with mental health and mental performance-related issues. Visit lifteffect.com, that's L-I-F-T-A-F-F-E-C-T.com to book your free consultation. And finally, this podcast is for general informational purposes only. It does not constitute the practice of counseling, psychotherapy, medicine, or any other healthcare service, including the giving of medical advice. No therapeutic or provider-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and any materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content of this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional psychological advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining advice for any psychological or medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on the Lift Effect Podcast.